congratulating students, honoured guests, families and friends. On behalf of the faculty, staff and administration of the School of Fine Arts, welcome to the 135th commencement exercise of the University of Connecticut and the undergraduate ceremony of the School of Fine Arts. Will the audience please rise and join in the singing of the national anthem led by Catherine Marie Fahey of the class of 2014. <laughs> stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming on the rocket Thank you. We're here in the Jorgensen Centre for the Performing Arts today to pay tribute to our graduates in the School of Fine Arts and to pay tribute to those students who've received special recognition in art and art history, dramatic arts and music. And it gives me great pleasure today to introduce you to those who are participating in this special ceremony. I would like to invite each person to stand and to remain standing as I make the introductions. And please hold your applause until everybody has been in introduced. Dr. Moon Choi, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. Today's commencement speaker, Sharon Loudon. Dan Russo, our alumni speaker from the Dramatic Arts class of 2008. <coughs> Professor Vince Cardinal, Head of Dramatic Arts and Artistic Director of Connecticut Repertory Company. Dr. Eric Rice, Head of Music. Professor Tim Hunter, Head of the Digital Media and Design and Director of the Digital Media Center. Colleen Bridgman, Assistant Dean and School Marshal. Our alumni speaker, our student speaker, sorry, Alyssa Najem, member of the Art and Art History class. Dr. Anne DeLeva, Head of Art and Art History. Dr. Kenneth Fuchs, Associate Head of Music. Professor Scott Ripley, Associate Head of Dramatic Arts. <laughs> Professor Laurie Sloan, Associate Head of Art and Art History. And Eva Gorbans, Assistant Dean and Director of Student Advising for Undergraduate Education. Faculty members from Art and Art History. Faculty members from Digital Media and Design. Faculty members from Dramatic Arts. And faculty members from Music. Would you please join me in recognizing our platform party? <laughs> In the audience today are members of our faculty, staff, and distinguished guests. Thank you all very much for being here. We'd also like to recognize and to honor all the parents and the grandparents of our graduating students, and particularly all the mothers and grandmothers because it's Mother's Day weekend. So would you all please stand and receive a special round of applause from all of us.
Thank you. I'm delighted now to introduce Sharon Loudon, our commencement speaker today. Sharon is a renowned artist and editor of Living and Sustaining a Creative Life, essays by 40 working artists. Recently, Ms. Loudon installed one of her works entitled Merge in the newly constructed Oak Hall on campus. And if you have a chance, please go and see this wonderful installation. So welcome to Sharon Loudon. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here with you. First and foremost, I just want to say congratulations for doing this, for getting this far, for making this commitment to yourself and, and, for your work, and to your work, for reaching this accomplishment. This is pretty amazing that you've gotten here. So congratulations. You guys are awesome. It That's how I feel about you guys. I've been here before, I love this place, I love the students, I can't believe I'm even here. I'm so grateful that you would have me here and now I feel this heavy responsibility, I gotta tell you something that you can carry with you, so I'm gonna try to do that. So listen, before I start, I just wanna uh, tell you that, um, I wanna give you a little bit of perspective of where I'm coming from. So I received my BFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and I got my master's from Yale University in 1991 and I graduated with $115,000 in debt. And while I was in line over there, I, got, I did a calculation with some help from some faculty here, and that is equivalent to $200,303.69 today. It's pretty daunting, right? So when I graduated from Yale, and with all that debt, because my parents couldn't pay for my education, um, I moved to New York and with my peers, naturally, and at least that was at the time very natural. And I got a job uh, as a receptionist for an office, man an office manager position. And I used that job to apply for other opportunities because I couldn't afford to buy a computer at the time. But for three months, in three months into my new reality after school, I just didn't know how to do it. I did not know how to live and sustain a creative life. I didn't know how to balance it and how to pay for the bills. I, didn't, I couldn't stand these creditors calling me. So I called one of my professors from Yale at home, and every faculty member here is gonna kill me for saying that. I don't want anybody to do this. But I did it, okay, I did it. I'm just telling you what I did. And I was crying, and I said, how do I do this? And he said, just let your work carry you. And I said, okay, that's good. I understand that, because it's your work is your biggest asset. But then the creditors started calling me and I didn't know what to do. You know, how was I gonna pay that debt off? So I got very angry. And I think anger, even though it probably shortened your life, was really, really good for me because it ignited my work ethic even more. And th through a lot of pain, I, pa I found my way. I paid those loans within 10 years with, with, through my commissions but all, and, being, and, and living as an artist, but also some creative financing. So I know that you can do it as well. Right now is the best time ever to be a creative person in this world. And we are important, we are worthy, we have validation, we are not isolated, and I truly believe we are the hardest working individuals in this society. I'm serious, right? Don't you agree with me? <laughs> totally. I'm in a church, this is a church. Okay, so. Uh, I'll tell you, why is it that right now is so good? Because w it's really important that creativity, it's so needed. And because creativity is entrepreneurial, we are at an advantage. So let me tell you what I think are the great abilities and assets of a creative individual in this life. First of all, we know how to take risks. We do it in our creative practice. We can do it in the real world. We can maneuver, we can move from one job to the next. We can figure out ways of getting opportunities because we think out of the box. We can think outside of the box. Because we can see things differently, we can create conversation. As a visual artist, I start with a blank canvas and I go from there. As a performer, a musician, you have to start from somewhere. The guts to be able to do that means you can do that in the real world to making a living. And not a lot of people can do that. 
I'm telling you. This is very important to get this mind frame. I'm serious. And we are some of the fewest groups of, of people in the world that are able to do what we want to do in life. My husband, who's here, and he's a jazz musician, I might add, um, fondly says that we live in the cracks of life. I love that. Because while everybody else is celebrating some holiday, I don't know, I'm in my studio working. I'm in a race. I'm ahead of all those people. I feel like I have the freedom, and we all have the freedom here to do what we want to do creatively. I also think if we had the mindset that work is a privilege rather than a burden, that we can select the jobs that we choose. I hate the word day job. I hate that phrase, day job, day job. What the hell does that mean? It means that a job that, that you select supporting your creative practice, but pick something that maybe you would enjoy that can support that mentally and physically. And so I think work is not a burden. I think that we never retire because we've already retired. What are we retiring to? Because we already have those, that creativity and what we want to do in our lives. So parents are probably wondering, they're probably rolling their eyes right now and they're saying, how does this turn into cash for my kids? I mean, come on, did I just wake up all the parents? Okay, so you guys got, are looking at me, right? So listen, first and foremost, I want to turn to a national study from the Strategic National Arts Alumni Project, SNAP. That's what that organization's called. And the study surveyed more than 36,000 arts alumni from 66 institutions of the US and Canada. And it was in 2012. And the person who was in charge of that, he wrote, he said, many think of an arts career as an on-off switch with graduates becoming professional artists or leaving the field to pursue a different path. But there are many variations in hues. Many arts graduate, graduates work both inside and out of, the art, out of art simultaneously. Most continue to make and perform art even when they work as lawyers or lab technicians. And they use their arts training in a variety of settings and careers. In a sense then, arts graduates never really graduate from the arts. They stay involved. So I think that's very true. And then there are no longer right now the stigmas that are associated with being an artist. Sure, people have deemed us to be unusual, nuts, troublesome, problematic, hippie, not normal. I don't wanna be normal, what the hell is that? <laughs> However, these characteristics are high in demand right now, they really are, especially in this economy where it calls for creative thinkers to make things happen. So as it's been said, I, had a book, I have a book out right now, Living and Sustaining a Creative Life, and I've been on a big book tour. I just did my 41st stop out of 53, and I've met hundreds, if not thousands, of artists since November 2nd. And I've learned a lot from these artists, and, and I've learned a lot actually from a lot of writers, musicians, anybody who's creative seems to come on the book tour. And I've learned they work many jobs. They find different ways to produce their craft and live how they want to live. And so I think, you know, the question is though, what do you do when you get out of school? You know, how do you make that living? And back to the cash thing. So I think, here, here are my points of advice. I'm just gonna give you some advice. I mean, you didn't ask me right now, but I'm just gonna tell you if you don't mind. First, how, get yourself a job. I mean, you gotta make some money. You just do something to put some money in your pocket. But like I said, try to pick something that you might wanna enjoy. Think about it, have some intention. What's gonna complement your creative practice? Create, create your community because it takes a village. Today on Facebook, I posted that I was here and I had said to people, and I'm looking at my iPhone, on purpose, because I'm gonna read from it. I said to people, I said, give me some comments to help my speech today. Reach out to these people, artist to artist. And someone said on my Facebook page, she said, and you're welcome to look at my Facebook page, you can see all the comments. She said, look to your left and look to your right. These people are your tribe. Help each other as you move forward. That's exactly right. Find your community, nurture your community, go to plays, go to art openings, go to concerts, go to performances. Be a part of your community by giving. Be a giver, it's very important, and care. Don't just be a giver because you're trying to get somewhere. People will figure that out. That'll be the end of your day. So try to be 
think of giving as a currency. Also think of, take the community and put it into a mailing list. That sounds so rudimentary and fundamental, but that's a huge currency, because that means you're keeping your uh, audience with you and referencing that. Let the universe dictate your life a little bit. I am such a control freak. I'm now relaxing as I get older. But I thought when I got out of school, I'm just gonna dictate everything that's gonna happen to me in my life. Check, 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 check. And I had no idea that the universe actually had some other plans for me. So I think that you have to let, pay attention and let things happen. I have a story to share with you, okay? I hope this isn't boring. I wanna entertain you a little bit. So here's a little bit of a story that might be inspiring, okay? You ready? So I applied for a New York Foundation for the Arts grant 15 times over 22 years. 2,900 people applied for it last year. I finally got it last year. So what does that say? It says, well, first of all, really depressing. Sharon, God, you had to wait 22 years to get this damn thing. It was only $7,000. So, and in New York, that went in three minutes. So for, for me, I, I, but it, it says to me that if I keep persevering and not actually feel like it's a rejection that I keep going, I'll get somewhere. So that's my next thing. There is no such thing as a rejection, but just a difference of opinion. They're all differences of opinion. That's all they are. You know what a rejection is? Is when you get dumped by your boyfriend or your girlfriend, or your parents yell at you, like, like what are you doing with that degree? So I think that, and I'm telling you what you're doing with that degree. So I think that you can't take things personally. Be a vehicle for your work. Be independent and separate from your work if you can. So I think also the most important thing of all, as I'm wrapping this up, is to say, make great work. Be who you are. Nurture your craft. Nurture who you are as a creative being know that that is your truth and stay true to that and that is going to separate you from everybody else. I think also finally I ask everyone here to try to put your insecurities to bed if you can because as a creative person and just sharing t maybe it's TMI to everybody but I live with a lot of dark demons every single day that knock on my door and say I'm not good enough that I don't belong anywhere that I'm not relevant in society. It sounds like an old SNL skit, but it's actually really true. So I think that, here's what I say about them, we have nothing to lose. We are who we are, and we have a lot of gifts. And I think you can put those to bed and fight those as much as you can and keep going forward and have faith in your work. Look into your work. I'm turning 50 in five days, and I feel free living as an artist, as a creative being. Everyone here defines who you are every day. Sure, life can be stressful, but I always think of it as a challenge rather than being hard. I hate when people say life is hard. So what? It's a challenge. And then taking that challenge and running with it is what's really important. There are a lot of opportunities out there and chances, and that means there's something very fruitful out there for you when you walk out of here. And you can also make those opportunities for you. And that's a fantastic thing, because we don't have those stigmas anymore as creative people. We are getting inter more integral in society. I have to say, remember, the arts has a tremendous ecosystem, which is vast, and what's wonderful about being a creative cultural producer I think of myself as a culture producer, as an extension of my practice. Everybody here has that within them. There is an immediate accept acceptance in this ecosystem and a place for everyone. There is a place for all of you. So as I leave you today with all of my energy, first of all, I say, email me. Let me be a part of your community. Use every part of social media you can. Reach for everything. And I say, welcome to the arteries of the big heart of the arts, because we need you. We welcome you, and we really love you. Congratulations, people. Thank you so much, Sharon, for such an inspirational speech. Thank you. And now I'm delighted to introduce the Yukon Saxophone Quartet, who are going to perform 
Four for Tango by Astor Piazzolla. Thank you.
It's now my great pleasure to welcome Dan Rousseau to the podium to present the alumni greetings to the, to the 2014 graduating class. Dan Rousseau graduated from Dramatic Arts in 2008, and since then, he has made a wonderful career as a lighting designer. Recently, Dan won an Emmy Award for scenic and lighting design for his team's work on NBC's Democracy Plaza Election Night 2012 from Rockefeller Center. Please welcome Dan Russo. It's truly an honor to be invited to the stage six years after I made my walk across it. And I want to thank Dean Grant and the School of Fine Arts Management Committee for extending the invitation to be your alumni speaker today. I remember sitting in these very seats, well, they're a lot nicer than when I was here, and thinking, this is it. This is what all the hard work has brought me to. I'm going to be a college graduate from the University of Connecticut with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in Design Theater Tech concentrating in lighting. What have I gotten myself into? I listened closely to every word of every speech, hoping for something to cling on to and take with me into the world that was only a diploma away. Why didn't I just study risk management and insurance or chemical engineering? It's simple. I wanted to be an artist. That's why, we're here all, that's why we're here all today. It's why you spend four or more years immersing yourself with everything fine arts related. It's the same reason why you spend all-nighters in the theaters, cramped practice rooms, art labs, under piles of books, swimming through scores, inhaling fumes from who knows what, and even a night at the Haunted Depot campus. <laughs> all in pursuit of your passion. Here's what separates you from the other 100 majors graduating this weekend. You don't empty all your emotions into an Excel spreadsheet. You don't spend hours on end rehearsing multivariable calculus. You don't go into work at 9 a.m., close the briefcase at 5, but instead you keep going night after night until your eyes burn. A cubicle will never contain all the images, the words, the symphonies, the movement that you, the artist, feel every day. Think about it the next time you sit down at a piano and play the first notes and hear it echo back with a full orchestra. When you take a pencil and with the first line you draw suddenly, an entire landscape comes to life. When you turn on the light for the first time with a color you hesitated choosing and it stops you in your tracks. When you click a mouse and see the digital images you created tower over you in Times Square. Or when you snap a photo and it makes the cover issue. No matter what you do past today, you all have special gifts that cannot be traded on Wall Street or grown in a greenhouse. You have chosen, or some would argue it has chosen you, a career in fine arts that has unlimited potential. You really got a good deal here after all. Now that you feel really good about today, but might feel unsure about tomorrow, I have some advice for you, and that is to know how to adapt. Adapting is what will guarantee that you can survive the ever-changing, uneasy, and sometimes disappointing job market. By adapting, I mean reconciling oneself to finding one's feet and to alter, to adjust, to readjust, to reshape, to rework your skills, applying the core elements that you spent your time here perfecting to make something of a career. For me, I sat here thinking I was going to be the next big name on Broadway with my sights winning a Tony. Little did I know that I would find myself lighting for an audience of a million viewers and winning an Emmy. Did I sacrifice all the training and, that w and desire that went into work in the theater? Absolutely not. For me, working in the theater will never leave me and will always be a part of what I love doing the most. I found something that while not the same exact goal I had set out to do, is close to, if not better, than what I thought I could be doing. There is more to gain from getting messy and making mistakes than to sit idle and let opportunity pass you by. Sitting next to you and gathered in this room are now colleagues that are a key to keeping your passions alive. They are the network of performers and artists that you can use to create work for yourself and in turn, give them an opportunity for something great. While I was a student, I met Professor Greg Webster, who just so happened to be the artistic director of Split Knuckle Theater. He invited me to be the lighting designer for his company's show, and out of that show, I have gone on to become a company member and taking their hit show, Endurance, across the country and around the world. Yeah. <laughs> I have also worked with fellow students who I graduated with on many productions in the city. You all have to band together to help each other. You're all in the same boat now. Some final thoughts I want to leave you with. Remember the people who got you to where you are and where you're going, especially moms. Hi, mom. 
They are the ones who will be ecstatic when you tell them of your accomplishments. They are also going to be the ones who will tell you to never give up when you're defeated. Speaking of defeat, I'm sorry to say it's unavoidable and it's going to hurt. If you find yourself straying away from the original goals you sent out, make what you're doing your own. Find the little ways to keep the dream alive and keep doing what you know you love to do. Congratulations on your accomplishments today. Never forget, you are Yukon Huskies and the world awaits you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, so much. Thank you. So it's my distinct pleasure now to introduce you to the student who's been selected as the representative of the graduating class of 2014 from the School of Fine Arts. Alyssa Najem has been extraordinary while she's been here at UConn. She's taken an active role, not only in her home department of art and art history, but right across the school. Her involvement in the Student Art Initiative for Leadership or SAIL program has garnered a lot of support from both the faculty and students. Alyssa is best known to me as one of the students who spearheaded the We Art Together movement last year, and for that, I'm incredibly grateful. Please welcome the 2014 student speaker, Alyssa Najem. This just got very, very real. So hello there, and happiest of evenings to all of you. Family and friends, and my fellow soon-to-be alums, we are to the School of Fine Arts, class of 2014. First of all, I would like to thank all parties involved in the commencement ceremony preparation, Dean Grant and commencement speaker Sharon Loudon. Also, thank you to the faculty and staff who have dedicated much of their lives to kicking our butts to get us to this point. And if we don't say it enough, we appreciate your continued commitment to us over the past four years. This past summer, I joined the horde of, horde of commuters traveling to New York City. Just before entering the Grand Central Station, there is a billboard that continuously caught my attention. In all caps, it said gratitude. Gratitude is a term that expresses a feeling of appreciation, something that I think we all take for granted sometimes during our busy schedules. Today, in all days to come, should be a day of thanks. First, for my supportive family that never doubted my ability to pursue design, and thanks to being the rebellious middle child, I could actually get away with such a career path. They have bravely allowed me to gain a global perspective on art when they allowed me to study abroad twice once in Florence and once in London. Such opportunities here and overseas allowed me to cultivate lasting friendships that were molded during six-hour design critiques, gallery hopping, and art student parties we like to call arties. All of you, both my peers and professors, have inspired me to be a better communication designer. By going to performances, recitals, and exhibits, it's safe to say I've learned to appreciate and love all facets of art. It has truly been a collaborative effort these past four years. During our time here, we triumphed during two national championships, <laughs> survived the wind tunnels and icy sidewalks that covered campus, and we're overjoyed when, re when receiving Jay Hickey's class cancellation emails, giving us reason to binge on TV shows, sleep, and easing our minds when ignoring impending deadlines. As spring and summer approach, the smell of cow manure that permeates the air <laughs> <coughs> reminded us to go get some bar, um, dairy bar ice cream and sit on Horace Barn Hill, or escape to Mansfield Hollow to take some solid Insta pics. Thank you to the Met Opera trips that allowed us to escape to the city to marvel at the splendor of music and be inspired by the elaborate set designs. Thanks to that homework being worth 50% of the overall grade, I'm sure at least 99.9% 99, 99 .9 of you also feel solid about passing problem solving, which should really be called problem solving, colon, the math class even artists can pass. <laughs> Long live Store 24 and the days of student discounts that will live in our memories for now. By now we have perfected the phrase, work hard, play hard. 
Emerging from the gray dot on the horizon line of this massive campus, we persevered, learned from our failures, and accomplished countless projects. Without much doubt, to relieve any stress, we spent lots of time watching cat videos and relating to the countless BuzzFeed articles that always seemed to be so shockingly accurate. Most importantly, we came to the school possibly without a clue of what we wanted to do, and yet we find ourselves yet again leaving our comfort zones to continue this exciting adventure, still unsure, but this time with a refined image of our future goals and expectations. By default, we are risk takers, something that people only aspire to be. We are movers and doers, pushing boundaries and reaping the benefits of the creative process. We emotionally inspire and bring to life many intangible things and make them tangible to others. Long days in the studios, rehearsal after rehearsal, all for the opportunity to showcase our work and talents to an audience and make them feel something. And that is very powerful and awesome. I believe this is what we as creative innovators live for, seeing the effects that our pieces have on others while doing what we love most. In addition to this, we are probably the only community that had an excuse to perform impromptu combat fighting at the dining halls, singing aloud to the 90s playlist while subsequently being sucked into the Buckley Time Warp, where breakfast turned to dinner in a blink of an eye. This was the Shippy and Buckley experience. For those of you that do not know, Shippy is where it started for many of us, unless you were the unfortunate few that got put in North. As I'm sure some of you can relate, living amongst other like-minded people is what helped shape who we've become. As a newly independent freshman coming from a high school with a mere 90 students in my graduating class to this city of almost 18,000, I was terrified. Starting off as a student athlete for crew, I found my niche in the sixth floor divas and sleepless artists. In fact, Brie, who you'll hear from in a moment, was my roommate at the time, and my first of many all-nighters was shared with her. As she went to nap at 4.30 a.m., I walked out of the door for morning practice and swore to never pull an all-nighter again as I kept falling asleep in the boat. But that never really panned out as I perfected my research approach, although to some it may look like procrastination. There is no denying it's actually a small miracle this speech was completed. <laughs> the School of Fine Arts has worked together to build a strong and thriving community. And as artists, I think there's a bit of athleticism in all of us. After all, this is Husky Nation. From training our hands, eyes, and brains to render an object, to coordinating bodies that march the beat in a band, we become athletes of creation. And as athletes also welcome friendly competition, an aspect of our craft that is necessary to raise our standards and expand our mental capacity to create. We have motivated and challenged each other to be the best possible collection of artists over the past four years. Hopefully, at this point, we welcome constructive criticism and know how to channel feedback into our work. In the grand scheme of things, the art world is a small one. As alumni, we should leave this community all while embracing the network that we have, no matter how small. The petite camaraderie is what makes this school unique amongst all other schools at UConn. This is a team you should absolutely be grateful for. So, in order for us to no longer be strangers as we head out into the so-called real world, I want all of you to take out your cell phones, and in the spirit of selfies, capture yourself and the person to the right of you, or whomever, put it in the universe. Um, if you can go on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and hashtag WeArtYukon, or hashtag Yukon, or both would be best. So I'm gonna, excuse me while I take out my phone and take a selfie. <laughs> put on your best faces. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> One more for good measure. <laughs> Woo, okay. Remember that being grateful and staying inspired will help you become the artist you aspire to be. So never stop experimenting, procrastinating, and especially playing. 
On that note, best of luck paying off your student loans. And as one of my design professors, Edwin Yeager, likes to say, this is not a goodbye, but a see you later. Grazie, cheers, and thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2014. Thank you, thank you so much. Well done, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you so much, Alyssa. In honor of the class of 2014, the school commissioned one of our printmaking students to design a print. And one of these prints will hang in the office of the Dean of the School of Fine Arts, along with all the other commissioned works from graduates since 2002. The title of this year's print is Taking Flight, and you'll find a, a copy of it in your uh, program there. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Brianna Lynn Riganese, who will tell us her inspiration behind this piece. This will be quick, I promise. Um, first off, I would like to thank Dean Grant for allowing me this opportunity and Professor Lori Sloan for helping me do the print. Um, I feel like we bonded a lot through our banter. I don't know if you agree. Um, <laughs> it was really intimidating to be asked to do the print. Um, equally fantastic, but really intimidating. But I think, I think it... It, it works well for our class, for our graduating class. Um, it's hard to believe that this journey of creative and intellectual growth has come to an end, but it never really ends. There's always more to learn. There's always another step that we have to take, another stage in our lives. Birds, in general, have made quite the appearance in the body of work that I've created over the past four years at UConn. Owls, hawks, eagles, and most recently, crows and ravens. Um, I never really understood their importance until now. Although sometimes seen as menacing and ominous, crows are actually very intelligent and resourceful. To me, they conjure qualities of potential energy and freedom. This hand-printed work, entitled Taking Flight, depicts a crow that has landed for a time and upon gathering itself, has taken to flight once more. Similarly, the School of Fine Arts at UConn offers its students a solid place to land. It is a place that has encouraged all of us to challenge preconceptions, exchange ideas, and gather important information. It has also prepared us to take flight, to move on to the next stage of our lives. This print resulted from the fabrication of several shaped plates their ink surfaces were transferred to paper through the extreme pressure of a printing press. I think there's a certain integrity and special presence to a print. I am a printmaking major, so. Um, at the beginning, an artist has a general idea of how the image will ultimately appear, but until the materials are transformed through the whole process, things are not entirely predictable. Again, I see parallels to our experience here at UConn. We enter the university with some ideas about what we may, might gain, but we leave with a richness we could never have expected. It's my little cheesy part. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you so much, Brianna. And in recognition for your work and for your commitment to the School of Fine Arts, I'd like to present you with a small honorarium. Well done, well done. You know, it's great. It's now my honor to present a framed copy of the 2014 print to our three speakers. So Sharon, Dan, and Alyssa, if I could ask you just to come forward. Thank you. A 
As Dean of the School of Fine Arts, I now invite Professor Catherine Myers to escort the 2014 graduating class from the Department of Art and Art History to the platform. Professor Laurie Sloan will present the candidates and I invite Dr. Andaleva and the platform faculty from Art and Art History to please come forward. Yeah, no, just stand down here. Yeah, just. Alyssa Michelle Najim. <laughs> Brianna Lynn Ringanese. Ringani I'm sorry. <laughs> Practiced it. Elizabeth S Sarah Rice. Jacob John Morgan. Nicholas Jesse Spuches. Don S. Virgilio. Dylan Harley Fedora. Joseph Christopher Cardoso. Michael Carpiel. Carrie Elizabeth Garneau. Vinnie Dominic Spinelli. Jamie Lee Girolamo, sorry, Jamie. <laughs> Braylon Elizabeth Hawkins. Taylor Elizabeth Byrne. Megan Alana Albin. Kimberly L. Charlo. Margaret Ann Nesser. Ariel Catherine Maranich. Dominique Enza Manarca. Samantha Nicole Seely. China Lauren Davis. Jesse LaRoche. Robert Calderon Sargent. Matthew James Noonan. Michelle Lynn Penny. Kara Marie Giratana. Alexis Amber Letizia. <laughs> Lindsay Allison Garant. <laughs> Kari Elizabeth Swenson. <laughs> Celine Eleanor St. Pierre. 
Sonny Ann Capasso. Jeffrey Stephen Fenster. Carolina Hack. Ashley Mary Wood. Rebecca Lee Uliets. Allison Garvey. Emily Joan Campbell. Atinapan Mina Pampakti. Raquel Lynn Spina. Rachel, you wrote it again. Rachel Lynn Spina. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. Rebecca June Melaragno. Jetsenia Rodriguez. Brandon Jair Campbell. Good. Adina Lara Monk. Jonathan Judd. Natalie Nicole Sequera. Gina Marie Croteau. Bryce Elizabeth de Flamand. Amanda Morgan Sims. Kathleen Mary McIntyre. Andrea Morgan Manchero. Hayato Kawai, Jin. Thank you. Now can I ask Professor Greg Webster to escort the 2014 graduating class from the Department of Dramatic Arts. Professor Scott Ripley will present the candidates, and I'll ask Vince Cardinal to the platform and the faculty from Dramatic Arts. Corey, Corey Edith Layden Sussler, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Design and Technical Theater. Colleen Mary Labella, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. Brianna Lee Maya, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. William Michael Graziano, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. Ryan Thomas Marcone, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. Adam John Schneeman, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. Andriana Prost, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. Caitlin Gorman, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. Allison Danielchuk, 
Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. Coles Wilton Prince, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. Marissa Disa, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Acting. Harrison Howard Haney, Bachelor of Fine Arts Acting and Bachelor of Fine Arts Puppetry. Matthew Philip Iacosa, Bachelor of Fine Arts Design and Technical Theater. Haley Jane Casper, Bachelor of Fine Arts Design and Technical Theater. Erica Therese Johnson, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Design and Technical Theater. Brenna Miriam Sellers, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Design and Technical Theater. Gregory Fuscaldo, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Design and Technical Theater. Michael Christian Fryer, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Design and Technical Theater. Anna Louise Woodruff, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Studies. Samantha Nicole Partney, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Studies. Veronica Marie Wolanin, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Studies. Bailey Serene Rosenberg, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Studies. Emily Catherine Bourne, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Studies. Christiane Allison Esperanza Glenlong, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Studies. Elizabeth Amanda Ciccone, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Studies. Angela Louise White, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Studies. Samantha Gabrielle Goldman, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Studies. Thank you all so much to our dramatic arts huggers. They're great at it. Thank you all. <laughs> now, now I'd like to ask Dr. Ron Squibbs to escort the 2014 graduating class from the Department of Music to the platform. Dr. Kenneth Fuchs will present the candidates, and I would ask Dr. Eric Rice and the platform faculty from music to please come forward. Catherine Marie Fahey, Bachelor of Music, Voice. Glenn Joseph Ullman, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Viola. Christina Quentel, Bachelor of Music, Voice. Grace Louise Rimkunis, Bachelor of Arts, Percussion. Peter Ryan Parsegian, Bachelor of Music, Voice. Alexandria Taylor McGowan, Bachelor of Arts, Voice. Viola, excuse me, Viola. Niall Mitchell Reynolds,
Bachelor of Arts clarinet. Colin Vincent Walters, Bachelor of Arts Jazz Emphasis. Matthew Hans Burke, Bachelor of Music Voice. Connor Daniel Sullivan, Bachelor of Arts Saxophone. Leslie Alyssa Knack, Bachelor of Music Trumpet. Matthew David Nichols, Bachelor of Music, Cello. Samantha Lynn Goodell, Bachelor of Arts, Violin. Alexandra D. Mion, Bachelor of Arts, String Bass. Jennifer Elizabeth Shames, Bachelor of Arts, Clarinet. Leo Stephen Castle, Bachelor of Arts, Violin. Justin Daniel Patton, Bachelor of Arts, Piano. Mitchell Thomas Bernier, Bachelor of Arts, Tuba. Emily Rose Palumbo, Bachelor of Arts, Flute. Kari Elizabeth Swenson, Bachelor of Arts, Flute. Jillian Tamara Senchikoska, Bachelor of Arts, Flute. Emma Catherine Reber, Bachelor of Arts, Horn. Emily Louise Lavins, Bachelor of Music, Saxophone. Marissa Ann Levy, Bachelor of Arts, Piano. Michael Joseph Albain, Bachelor of Music, Composition. Nicholas Peter Troutman, Bachelor of Music, Theory, and Bachelor of Arts, Jazz. David John Dorfman, Bachelor of Music, Trumpet. <laughs> Joshua Gabriel Adam Terry, Bachelor of Music, Saxophone. John Charles Schuster, Bachelor of Arts, Percussion. Rui Hayadashida, Bachelor of Arts, Clarinet. <laughs> Michael C. May, Bachelor of Arts, Voice. Charles Anthony Gervais, Bachelor of Arts, Saxophone. Thank you all very much. This evening, we're graduating one university scholar, several honors scholars, and also numerous New England and Babbage scholars. Could I ask you all to stand, please, and be recognized? Congratulations to each and every single one of you. Congratulations. I'd now like to call on Provost Moon Choi to confer the degrees on our graduating students. Thank you very much, Dean Grant. Will the candidates in art and art history, dramatic arts, and music please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the University of Connecticut and in accordance with the procedures and regulations of the university, 
I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Fine Arts for which we have been presented at the 136th commencement of the University of Connecticut. I charge you now to assume fully the responsibilities of your new status, to enlarge upon the foundations of knowledge that you have acquired, to take upon yourselves the obligations of an enlarged vision, and to seek to do your fair share of work of this world. You are now UConn alumni. Congratulations. Thank you. Please be seated for just a few moments. On this day, when we celebrate our students, we're also honoured to acknowledge three of our faculty members. Ray DiCapio, can you please rise? Professor DiCapio from Art and Art History is a tireless advocate for our students and for the school. This year, Ray was given one of the university's highest honours, the Institute for Teaching and Learning Teacher Fellow Award. Ray, I'm sure that all the students that you've worked with can attest to the dedication that you demonstrate every single day of the year. Please join me in congratulating Ray on this fantastic honour. So just as our students are starting on a new journey today, there are two professors that are leaving us for journeys of their own as retirees. Professor Karen Riker, can you please come forward? I just say the word first off. Karen, Karen has shared her expertise as a mass voice during speech professor in dramatic arts for the past 13 and a half years here at UConn. And this is part of a rich professional career that has spanned 45 years. We're all going to miss Karen. We're going to miss her thoughtful expertise and her uncanny emotional compass that has helped students and faculties alike down through the years. Thank you, Karen. I just want to say, and maybe I can speak for Jack as well, I don't know, that it has been an absolute privilege to complete this part of my career here at this university, in this school, and in this department. The college, my faculty have been highly skilled, supremely dedicated, and really good friends. And you students are phenomenal. Without you, we wouldn't do what we do. You really are the wind beneath our wings, as we hope we are yours. It's been a privilege to be with you. And thank you for sharing your journey with us. It's been great. Professor Jack Nardi, can you please come and join us? Jack, Jack has woven himself into the very fabric of the University of Connecticut. In addition to his undergraduate career at UConn, he has served the university for 33 years. We're grateful for the lifetime of commitment as Professor of Dramatic Arts technical director, colleague, and the most caring of curmudgeons. I was told to say that. <laughs> Jack, please accept this gift on our behalf. <laughs> Thank you. 
What a wonderful day it's been for all of us. It's truly been a day to celebrate. You all have reached a milestone in your lives, you've completed your undergraduate studies, and you are now embarking on the next phase of your educational journey. My greatest wish for you is that you will always recognize learning opportunities as you go through life, and that you'll always encounter inquiring, challenging, and creative minds. I wish you every success and happiness in whatever lies ahead for you. And on behalf of everybody here today, I'd like to thank our wonderful musicians for providing the music for this commencement ceremony. I'd also like to extend my gratitude to the 2014 School of Fine Arts Commencement Planning Committee, the staff of Jorgensen, and everyone in the School of Fine Arts who has worked so willingly to make this a great occasion for all of our students. The ceremony will now conclude with the recession of the platform party and the faculty and administration, followed by the student graduates led by their respective marshals. Could I ask that the parents and friends remain at their seats until all the students have exited to the lobby. Finally, congratulations to one and all. Have a great evening. <laughs>